Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the ninth Hammer tutorial of the version 2 series. This tutorial will apply to all Source Engine games, but I will be using Counter-Strike Global Offense to complete this tutorial. Today will be the creation, implementation, and painting of displacements in your level. There's a few things that we need to know before we go ahead and create all of our displacements. The first being that a displacement must always have four sides, and I'll show you guys what I mean when we go to create some. A displacement cannot be an entity, for instance a function detail, a function breakable, function brush, or so on. It will cause a VBSP compile error, and you'll need to move the brush back to the world before the map will compile properly. And the last one is that displacements do not stop leaks from reaching the void. Let's go ahead and hop to creating some displacements now. I'm going to go ahead and just grab a nature blend dirt leaves dirt, and we're just going to start with this texture. We're going to create a basic displacement to begin with. This is going to be just a 512 by 512 little piece of land. Now with this displacement created, we're going to take a closer look at it. This is a standard brush with six sides. It's essentially a flat cube. We're going to press Shift A or open up the face edit sheet and we'll get this familiar tool. We're going to click the displacement tab. This is where we'll be spending a large portion of this tutorial. You're able to click and select single faces. You'll notice that just the top face is selected now. That's, that's what we want. When you create a displacement, you'll only want the faces that are seen to be created. If you don't do this, you will get an error in lighting and it looks very bad. If you would like to see the error, please watch Source Engine Troubleshooting number 3 on displacements. So now let's go ahead and create this displacement. With just the top face selected, Create is now an option in the face edit sheet. Go ahead and click that, and we'll now get another window. It's called the Displacement Creation dialog box. We have power and then a number. This number can be 2, 3, or 4, and this is the resolution of the displacement. I'm going to set it to 2 and click OK. You'll now see that if you're using this same texture, it has changed its appearance. And the rest of the faces are now gone. And we get this triangle pattern on our displacement. These represent the vertices of where we can paint our displacement or make it bumpy. We now have some more options in our face edit sheet, such as power. If I turn this up to 3 and click apply, it gets more detailed. And 4, more detailed again. Displacements of the power of 4 can sometimes cause errors when you compile, and they do take additional resources. So we're just going to use displacements of power of 3. I'm not saying you can't use 4, just use them wisely. There's also no physics, hall, and ray collision. Ray is lighting. Hall is for, like, physics props and stuff like that, useful for mud and snow. And physics is physics collision, players walking on it and stuff like that. We also have elevation and scale. We'll play with those a little bit later. Now let's just look at what we can do with a displacement with the basic paint geometry tool. We click that and we get a paint geometry dialog box and a small little green sphere with an arrow in it. If we increase the radius in this box, that sphere gets bigger. Powers of deduction should tell you that this is the area that you're affecting on the displacement. If you left click on the displacement, it will increase its size by the distance here. If I set it to say 38 and click once, it'll go up 38 units. Whereas if I do 60, it will do 60. Typically you'll keep this a lower value to get more detailed and bumpy looking grass, like so. Now what if you've painted it too steep? You can use the smooth option. If you set distance to one with the smooth and then you just click, you'll see that it kind of evens out the landscape. This is a useful tool for painting grass and just making it even if you've done it a little too rough. That's what she said. We also have the raise to feature, which will raise it to a distance and no higher. So right now it'll raise it to 35 and it won't go higher than 35 up from the original brush. This is great if you just want to raise it to a certain point and then cut it off. We can also use the elevation. If we turn up the elevation, say to six, click apply, it will raise the entire displacement up six units from its original position as a brush. Now what if we want to bring this displacement back to a normal brush? Simply select it and click destroy. It'll return to a normal brush and you'll be good to go. We're going to turn it back into a displacement with a power of three. Now let's look what happens when we stretch a displacement. I'm going to place a player model there for reference. You can see the grid pattern. And now when I make the displacement bigger, that grid 
has stayed the same size. This is because the resolution does not scale up with the brush. We actually have to create more displacements to be able to get a higher amount of detail out of our displacement. Even if you were using power of 4, that sometimes is not enough detail for what you want. So, I'm going to scale my grid down to a hefty 32. And we're going to create an adjacent displacement. We're just going to do this with a simple shift drag. So hold down the shift key and drag this buddy over. We now have two displacements here, which is fine and dandy. Now sometimes when you're painting displacements, they don't equal up. For instance, I'm going to paint this, and oh no, there's this massive black space. This isn't an issue because displacements can be sewn, which is basically hammer automatically lining up the vertex points so that the displacements don't have any holes in them. To do this, just select both the displacements, holding the control key to select multiple objects, and sew is now an option. Go ahead and click sew, and it should automatically line up all of those points. Now there's a reason it did this, is because we've created the displacements to be adjacent and the vertex points are lining up. Now let's go ahead and take a look at what happens when the vertex points don't line up. Say if this displacement is a bit smaller. We can see the vertex points by using the vertex tool or these little dots in your 2D view, but in the 3D view with the vertex tool selected, we click and we see these white points. Those are the corner vertex points. Those must line up for a displacement to be able to sew. So these bottom ones line up here, but the top ones do not. Let's, let's see what happens when I try to sew these. Nothing. It's because those vertex points don't line up. Now I can select these points and make them line up again, and now they will sew without an issue. Now again, displacements must always have four sides, and you may be asking yourself now, how do you get a brush with less than four sides? You can use the clipping tool or you can use the vertex tool to create additional sides on your brush. So I'm going to clip this corner off. This will give me a face that will have five sides to it. As soon as I hit the enter key, the displacement's going to destroy and return back to a normal brush. This is because a displacement cannot have more than four sides. It creates a bit of a puzzle when we go to create our level. While making the vertex points line up and always having four sides, you have to do some creative work to get the landscape that you want. Now there's a few additional tricks that we can use to make sewing our displacements easier, such as aligning them to the middle point on the brush. You'll notice that when we're in the vertex tool, we have these yellow points in the middle. Now those yellow points can also be used to sew our displacements. If I cut this brush to be half the size, this brush now has lined up vertex points at the corner and at the middle. So now these will actually sew. So with the face edit sheet selected, I click sew, and it's going to go ahead and sew those together. Sometimes you'll get a little distortion here. The easiest way is to just manually repair that to give it the effect that you want, and then just resew it. Now, what if we want, for some reason, we have two of these, which also isn't a problem. Now that we have two here, so we have two small displacements and one large one, we just select them both, go to the displacement, and sew, and it'll automatically do it. Now there is something that you may have noticed that these don't line up with anything. That's because it's just completely ignoring these, or the removed verts. If you click DR up the top, you can view the removed verts. This really plays no practical function other than amusing yourself. So I'm going to keep that off. There are some other helpful tools up here that we use. The main one is this little 3D with the arch on it. This draws displacements how they're painted instead of their original brush form. I'm going to turn this off so you can see what it does. So these are still displacements, but it's now drawing them as if they're not painted. This is very useful for when you're creating the displacements and you need the vertex points to line up. So I'm just going to click that again to return them to their normal state. Now let's go ahead and create a small level that only uses displacements. This is going to be fairly simple because we're just going to use some very basic practices that we just learned upon. We're going to start off with our brush tool and we're going to create 512 by 512 little block. And now we're just going to copy this a bunch of times. So we have about nine of them. This will serve as our grassy little field. Now with these nine selected, go ahead and bring up the face edit sheet. Select just the top face only. Click displacement, create, power of three. 
and we're good. Now onto this texture changing. This is because we selected a blend texture. When you browse for a texture, you can typically search blend, B-L-E-N-D, and you'll get all of Valve's blend textures. Some of them will have an interesting tooltip like this, where there's two triangles showing two different textures. This is the blend texture. Other ones you can't see what their blend is from the thumbnail, you can just see that it says like blend old leaves, dirt leaves. It gives you kind of a hint of what you're going to get from that blend. But let's go ahead and look at what we're actually getting. So out of blend dirt leaves dirt, we go to displacement tab and invert alpha. When we click this, it will flip the texture to the other alpha so we can see what that is. But we actually want to paint the alpha. This will allow us to draw a path, if you will, down the center of the texture. So I'm going to grab my paint alpha here, and we get a kind of familiar box. I'm going to use the brush, and this is how large of an area it's going to affect. I'm going to choose 3, and set my value here to 100. This slider goes from 1 to 255. This is exactly how alpha works in everything else. It's a value from 0 to 255. 0 is off, 255 is on. Or in our case, 0 is texture 1, 255 is texture 2. So now I'm just going to click and draw a line through the center here, and we get this little pathy type thing. I'm going to turn my value down and kind of paint it a little more using right click to take away. This is just adding a little bit of detail to my path. Now we can look in on our path and kind of see that we have a dirt path in the middle here. If we want to survey and sample some other textures, we just select them and then we can apply them to see what we're getting. That one doesn't really look that great. That's a gravel path. That's concrete. So we have a ton of different options that we can use to play with here. So now with this dirt path selected, let's go ahead and paint our grass to look like grass. So with all nine selected, we're going to select displacement and paint geometry. When painting grass, you need to have a very smooth looking geometry. So I'm going to grab a big radius and a distance of one. And I'm just going to kind of, so I'm just going to fly through this, painting all of the areas except for the path up. I'm actually going to paint that down a little bit using the right click button. And then with this kind of how I want it to look, I'm going to grab a smaller brush, change this to smooth, and smooth out the path. This will make it a bit flatter. Now I can fly down and look at what I have. This will be good for the purposes of the tutorial. Now I'm going to click Noise. What Noise does is it randomly adds a value to each vertex. It's Noise. So if you click Noise, you'll get a min and max. Just for example sake, I'm going to set the max to 90 hit enter and you'll see that it's all over the place that's completely not what we want for noise I'm just going to set the max to 10 and that'll just kind of give us a little bit of a jagged feel to it you can set whatever value you want and just find one that you're happy with now all these displacements sewed without an issue because we created them at the same level and the vertex points met up now we want to create something a little more advanced we're going to put a cliff wall around this entire field of grass. So we're going to come to our textures again and we're going to choose a blend that we find appealing. I'm just going to grab this uh, blend mill, ground, rock, whatever. So with this now selected I'm going to grab my brush tool and we're going to create a 512 by 512 block. It's going to be 256 units high. So you'll have something that looks like this. Not that great. What we need to do is make sure that its vertex points line up with the grass beneath it. So we're going to turn off the 3D displacement draw so we can better visualize what we're working with here. Now I can use my vertex tool to actually verify that yes, these inside faces here do line up. The vertex points do meet and they will sew. So now I'm going to just shift drag this brush to be on all three sides. This is how I'm going to make this structure a little bit faster by doing it kind of a cheap little way. I'm going to select these six faces, the three top ones and the three front ones, click displacement tab and create with a power of three. We're now going to subdivide this displacement. Subdivision automatically smooths out a displacement 
depending on how it's selected. So go ahead and click subdivide and we'll see that it kind of curved this geometry inwards very smoothly. But the points are jagged. This is because that's just how the displacement was formed when we selected and subdivided it. The workaround to this is actually just create some dummy displacement. So I'm going to create a fake displacement there and a fake displacement there, select them all and subdivide them, and then just delete those two fake ones on the edge. Now this is too smooth for what I want, so I'm going to select them all again, go to displacement, and change the scale to 0.65. Then click apply, and I'll see that it's kind of hardened that out a little bit. Now we want to change the texture on the top. This is from Militia uh, Blend Grass here. It has leaves on the top of it. And now we can go ahead and paint the alpha here. And now you'll see when I'm painting it here, this texture actually meets up with this other texture. So at the top of this mountain wall here, there is the same texture that's on top. You'll notice that there are a lot of blend textures that play very well together and you'll want to use them in your level to create a very convincing effect. You can select and deselect faces while you're painting alpha or the geometry by holding the control key and clicking. So with that all kind of painted, we're now going to select all of these displacements and then just copy them to the other sides because we want this to be surrounded by cliffs. Since we're copying them and they're all at the same level, I know that the displacements are going to meet up and they'll sew without an issue. Now we're going to select both sides, copy it up, and then move it back down and rotate it. And now we have the four sides, but we have these little spaces here in the corners that we need to resolve. We're going to do this with the vertex manipulation tool once again. You need to get very familiar with the vertex tool when you're working with displacements. So pressing shift V once again, we're going to grab this piece here. And we're looking at this back vertex point. We're just going to select it and bring it down. That's all we're going to do. And we now see that we have this angled bit here. We're now going to select the other one, grab this back vertex point, and pull it over so it meets. This is exactly what we want. We have this little mismatched diamond shape here that's not to worry about. When we sew, that'll go away. We just want to do this to all four corners. This is making it so we can sew our displacements without having to create a new brush. There we go. Now we just select all of our displacements, hit sew, and now those little walls have fixed themselves up. Completely perfect. Now you also notice that the displacement ground should also be sewn with the walls. If you've painted too high like this, you'll notice it's a little jagged and messed up. This is because when we sewed, it moved it down too far. This is something you'll need to watch for. So we actually need to edit our grass just a tiny bit before we sew. So we want to move these down a little bit. And now we want to paint our rock walls so they roughly meet up with the grass. By roughly, I mean we see how this part of the grass raises up. We want the displacement wall almost meet there. It doesn't need to be perfect by any means, but we just want to pull it up so we don't get weird texture glitches. And you'll notice that while I'm scaling this, the texture is actually scaling as well. It's getting scrunched up or spread out because the texture is locked to these vertex points on the material. Now, there's no way around this with standard textures other than to just be very careful when you're painting it so it doesn't look strange. There are a few textures that have a seamless scale parameter on them that will allow this to not happen. I'll cover that in a later tutorial on texture creation. So now with these roughly met up like that, we're going to go back, select the entire level, and hit sew. Now in your purposes you probably won't select the entire level when you sew, you'll probably just select the displacements that you're working on. Since my level's all displacements, I'm just selecting everything. Now we have this cute little ridge, but it needs some detail added to it. It's looking a little shabby. So I'm just going to grab my paint geometry tool once again and we're gonna do some painting on the top. And we'll notice that we also have an axis option. Before we were just painting grass, which was flat, and face normal is the z-axis, but we might want to paint on the x or y. So if we click x, we'll notice that our arrow has now changed from being up and down to pointing on the x-axis. So it will now extrude that axis instead, so when I click, it's actually pushing and pulling on that axis. This will allow me to paint the other side 
of the cliff to give a nice little effect. Then I'm going to change it to the y-axis and paint the other side of the cliff. We'll see that the arrow did change for that. It's kind of pushing this in a little bit. And remember, once again, after you're done painting, you're just going to sew it. Now, these corners can be a bit of a hassle, but not to fear, we can always change this to the subdivide normal. So if we click this, we will get an arrow that's pointing out from the brush center, which means that when we click, nothing will actually happen until you turn spatial off. So it's very important to note, you have to turn spatial off for this to work. And then with spatial off, you are editing on a per vertex basis. So now when we click, it's pulling this one vertex in the direction that it's already been pulled. This will allow us to smooth out this corner a little bit since we're just pulling it out in the exact same way that it's already been pulled. And of course, you'll spend more time making your displacements look nice. So the subdivide normal is a very nice tool for extruding displacements in the direction that they've already been extruded. We now re-sew our displacements and they're looking pretty good. Now we're going to create a hole. Now holes in displacements are actually much harder than you would imagine. We're going to create a hole in this corner over here that leads to a small little cavern underneath the level. For this I'm going to actually change the texture to be a different one. It's actually going to be this little dirt texture. So we now have this small little dirt patch here and this is where our sinkhole is going to be. Now we're going to look at this brush in our top 3D view. We need to go ahead and cut away some of the unneeded bits here. I'm just hiding these so we can focus on our single displacement. We're now going to choose where we're cutting. So we're just going to use the clipping tool of shift X and cut our hole out. And now with our hole cut out in the center, we now need to make it so the vertex points line up and they sew. We're going to use the same idea that we did with the cliff corners here, except we're doing it on a flat piece of ground. Selecting just this single piece, we're going to start by selecting this bottom vertex point and dragging it into the center to meet up with this other displacement's vertex point. And then dragging this other one in to meet, grabbing the other brush and doing the same thing. So what you're left with is this shape with the two flat sides and the two angled sides on each piece. Now we have to make these other two pieces match and fit in like perfect puzzle pieces. Pull those up like that, just like so. Now we'll unhide everything, and voila, we have our hole. We just need to re-sew it, so we'll select all adjacent displacements, sew. There's a quick little way to select adjacent displacements if you're lazy. If you select a displacement in the face edit sheet and then just click select adjacent a few times, you'll select all the adjacent displacements automatically. Now when I created this, it kind of destroyed the smoothness of the ground, so this is where I'm going to use my smooth function. And just kind of smooth on the z-axis here, just a little bit to make this hole be a little more appealing to me. Now we need to make a small little tunnel underneath the hole that's going to lead to our little sandy cavern. Turning 3D off so I can easily view the vertex points while I'm creating my displacements, I'm creating a brush here along the side and pulling it straight down. There will be clipping on this top plane here, but I'm actually deleting all of the faces except for this inside one, so this is completely okay. So dragging that down, 512, I'm going to copy it over then copy them both and rotate them. So my goal here is to have these middle points and all their vertex points line up and verify that they do in fact line up. We can see that they are lining up without a problem. Going back to the 3D view, I'm selecting the inside faces and making them displacements of a power of three now. And now I'm clicking invert alpha to turn them into the other texture that I want to use. Now I'm going to click subdivide and that will turn it into a tube-like structure. Now I'm selecting the top faces of the hole and I'm just going to paint this downward some so it almost looks like a little sinkhole. 
Now with that painted down, and I've kind of destroyed it a little bit, it's not a problem. I'm just going to use smooth and kind of fix that up a little teeny tiny bit. Select these adjacent displacements down here, and even though there's this big gap here, the brushes vertex points line up. So they'll sew. And there we go. We have our little hole with a tunnel in our displacement. Sew everything back up, and there we go. May look a little weird, but once I paint the alpha on the rest of the way, it should be good. Now to put my slight cavern on the bottom here. This is going to be very, very, very simple. Just going to create a small little box. And this box is created so all of the vertex points already line up on the inside faces here. This is how we need to create the displacements so they do line up. Now I just need to create the tippy top here so that way it meets up with these inside faces. And we're going to create this the exact same way that we created the hole in the top here because it's just the hole, it's just chilling upside down. So now with all of these, I'm just going to grab the vertex points and make that. And now for the last little piece of magic here, select the inside faces of this entire little area. Displacement, create, power of three, and then hit subdivide. And it will smooth it out into a sphere. I'm going to change the scale to 0.6, hit apply, and then I'm going to add noise of 15. And that'll be all I'm going to do to this room, besides invert the alpha and then paint the alpha on the floor to be grass. Lastly, I'll sew it. And again, you can spend hours displacementing. It's just a very fun way to add a new level of depth to your map. That's a little jagged, but it's fine. And the last thing that we're going to add for this tutorial is a cave in the side of one of these cliff walls. When we cut this displacement up to create the cave, we want to make sure that it's going to line up with this dirt path here. So about right here should be good. But what if we decide we want it to be over to the left more? This is going to be fairly simple. I'm going to start by readjusting the path. Meet up over here, because that's where I want the cave to be but it's right in the middle of this brush. We don't want these vertex points to be in the way here. This isn't an issue, we just need to rethink our game plan a little bit and move the vertex points completely out of our way. So selecting all of these brushes here, I'm gonna highlight these vertex points, not this one, cause that one needs to stay there and I'm just gonna move them down. Just completely out of my way. Now we'll see we have a small one over here and kind of a strange shape there. And our path has moved a little bit, so we'll need to readjust that now that we've readjusted and we want our cliff to be somewhere right here, we just want to start by cutting the cliff opening out. So I'm going to make a cut here and then make another cut here. So this is how wide my path will be. Now lastly, I need to cut vertically off the top of this. So reducing my grid size and then making a cut across the top flat, I now have the opening. I'm just going to delete this brush and this is what I have to work with. Now there's another problem here is that these don't sew anymore. So to start off, grab your vertex tool and we need to vertex manipulate this so the vertex points meet up. Once again, just like with cutting the hole, we're going to pull this vertex point down to make this shape. Now once that shape is made, we're going to destroy this face because it's unseen once we pull this other side over. Let me show you. So this side is now getting pulled over here to meet up with that vertex point. We don't want this face to exist because it'll cause lighting issues. So just select it and click destroy and poof, it'll go away. If I destroy this other face here, the displacement will return back to a world brush. Now that we've destroyed that area on the left, we need to edit the displacement just ever so slightly before it will accept the changes we want to make. We need to get rid of this angled piece here, so just clip it away. And now we can drag this part down, and it'll happily accept that. Now once again, we need to destroy this face because it's unseen. So select it and hit destroy. And lastly, grab this vertex and pull it all the way over to take that corner place. Now select everything here, and hit so. Now we also have another problem. Our cave path only so wide. And we don't have any vertex points here that the ground will actually meet up with. So we need to create some 
displacements right here that can go into the tunnel. So to start with that, we're going to grab this point here and pull it down. We need to create some more room for our vertex manipulation. So after that's been pulled down and off to the side a little bit, we need to cut this area up more. We'll end up redoing our path once we're done with this. Grab your clipping tool and clip out the area where the path will go. Clip it into a little square. So now we have this small path and the vertex points will meet up with where we want to build our path in the center. And once again, with these three pieces, we're going to do that same angle trick that we did with everything else. Pull this vertex point up to the left, pull this one down, and this one over here. Pull that one over, and now they all meet up. Hit select adjacent a few times, and then hit sub. Now I'm just going to paint the alpha away and review my path a little bit. The path needs to be redone because we've edited so much that we just can't save what we had before, so we'll just remake it. There we go. Now we have our path leading right into our tunnel. Let's go ahead and create what will be in said tunnel, which is going to be another displacement. I'm just going to shift drag this over and then destroy it so I have normal brush. And then create a vertical brush, horizontal brush for the top. Now I want to put a turn in my cave. This is relatively simple. Just select the whole cave and then rotate it. This is a quick, easy way to create a cave that's going to turn that will automatically have lined up vertexes. Grab your clipping tool and do a 45 degree cut on the center here where they turn, only splitting it. You're not going to delete anything. Then select the selection tool, deselect the four sides that you want to keep, and then just delete those extra bits in the corner. Now grab your face edit sheet, select the inside faces, and turn them into displacements. Now I'm just going to hit subdivide, and it'll make it a curved path here, which actually looks really good, but it's a little, well, too perfect. So we're going to scale it down to 0.7. Click apply, add some noise, and then we're going to paint the elf on the ground to be the dirt path that we've been using ever so much. And then typically you'll change the wall textures as well as the ceiling to make the cave look more realistic. Now we're just going to select everything one last time, hit so, and now all those points meet up and we have our very badly painted concrete cave. Now the very last step to this process is blocking out the level with no draw because displacements do not stop leaks from getting out of your level. So I'm just going to run through this very, very quickly and block it out with no draw. Now with the level completely blocked off with world brushes that will prevent leaks from escaping, I'm going to go ahead and compile this level. Alright, here we are in game. We have our displacements. We can see that some of these hills are a little too hilly, and that's just something that you'll learn to deal with as you make more displacements. Everything will get better with time. We have our small little cave over here that looks pretty, pretty darn good. Some of those placements are a little rough where they've met up and been auto-sewed. So again, always make sure that you go back to your level and manually cut up the placements. And you spend a lot of time working with that. This cave looks pretty decent for the amount of time that we spent on it, which was like two seconds. Come on here and let's go check out our little bowl hole down here, which looks not too shabby. This looks pretty good. And that's the basics of displacements, guys, and how to create them and implement them into your level. There's another tool that you can use called Sculpt that was introduced with, I believe, Orange Box. It seems to be broken right now. Um, when I learn more about the tool and how to get it working again, I'll be sure to make a tutorial on it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date with Hammer Tutorial Version 2 Series Mapping.
thanks for watching. I hope this covered everything that you guys wanted out of a displacement tutorial, and happy mapping.